In this video today, I will be teaching Julian Davenport how to block because for it, not not his run block, his pass blocking in particular, because he seems to have a hard time grasping the concept of keeping a low base pad level, getting under the pads. Um, you know, when you first impact block and have that first hit, he doesn't seem to understand that you hit hard and then you know grab under the pads and stuff. He just seems to be like. I'll accept them into my arms lovingly. It's not really how blocking works, but he seems to think that's how it is. Um, so I'm going to be teaching him how to because the way he plays, either he knows how to and he just physically can't, or he doesn't know how to and he physically can't. Either way, he can't pass block. I think my dog might be better at pass blocking than Julian Davenport. It's just atrocious. So we're going to have some film review here. So let's get into this. Okay, so uh, I have two examples here. They're both uh, in this recent game. So you have Kyle Gra uh, Kylan Granson right there, and then lined up next to him is Julian Davenport. This is on the, the bottom left. And here you have this outside linebacker lined up at edge rusher and so it starts out comes off the edge you know normal kylan granson gets gives him a nice little shove there and then goes and either runs a route or goes and blocks someone else i don't know i think he runs a route after that um and then you have julian davenport one-on-one -on -one with him so julian davenport is already behind you can already see as he's shuffling he shuffles slowly, and that left pad and his whole left side there coming off the edge is going to overpower Julian Davenport and probably get to Carson Wentz. Also, something I forgot to acknowledge is when he comes off the ball. So you notice all the linemen are at the same level. And when, you're, when you come off to block someone, you want to stay low. Lowest man wins. And look at how high he comes up. He comes up higher than most of the other linemen. He comes up higher than Mark Lewinsky next to him. Mark Lewinsky is a Pro Bowl level um, right guard. And yeah, Julian Davenport. Well, Mark Lewinsky doesn't try. You know what I mean. Julian Davenport, he's coming off the edge. The shuffle's already slow. The pass, the, the outside linebackers already got him beat. He, Julian Davenport does get to him, but when he blocks, he puts his hands on the side of his pads. Why are you putting your hands on the sides of his pads? You're supposed to get under his pads. And as you can see, the edge, uh, it's not edge rusher, the outside linebacker also makes first contact. That gives him an advantage. That, that means that he is going to run how this goes. And so you have this outside linebacker just shove off Julian Davenport. Julian Davenport holds on for dear life on that right side and just can't. And he gets there. Luckily, Wentz gets this pass off as the pocket is collapsing around him. But he does take a shot here. And it's just... The, the decision-making of hand placement, the inability to keep a low base, pad level, impact blocking, just everything you're taught to do, Julian Davenport throws out the window. He's not fast enough off the ball. He doesn't stay low. He stands straight up. He doesn't get his hands under the pads, and it's just absolutely atrocious to watch. On to the next one. Here is the second second uh, clip of Julian Davenport making dumb decisions. So this time, I believe it's their actual edge rusher coming off the edge here, if I'm not mistaken. That's what it looks like. But again, you just see he's much higher coming off the ball than the other offensive lineman. Mark Lewinsky next to him is lower. See Julian Davenport shuffling. Just again, his, his shuffle... He can't keep up pace with 
the edge rushers or linebackers coming off the edge. He just can't keep up with people coming off the edge. Whether this is because he's not fast enough, I don't know, or technique, his shuffle does seem kind of wide at times, I guess. It's kind of hard to see. But either he's too slow or he just doesn't have the technique. Staying low, I don't know if that would necessarily help his speed staying low. It could, but he just needs to work on his speed. His technique, his actual speed, just everything needs some work here. Doesn't help that Wilkins does not really give Julian Davenport much help here blocking-wise. In fact, he runs into Julian Davenport, but still. And where he, again, he places his hands on the sides of the pad doesn't get under, doesn't doesn't stay, doesn't stick and stay. It's just terrible. I know some people would say, well, if you get under the pads, it could draw holding. Well, that's why you learn to disengage. And if you can keep a pace with him, it won't draw a holding. You're, you're supposed to get your hands under their pads and drive them back. You that's That's what you're supposed to do. Instead, Julian Davenport... Just watches the guy go by. Also, another thing you can't see here because your depth perception from this angle is messed up. But he sticks his hands. He extends his hands way too far, way too early. You don't, not that you necessarily want your hands super close to you, but you don't want them super far away. Like, look at Eric Fisher in the bottom there. Sticks, stays. He sticks, he stays, he keeps pace, he keeps his arms at a reasonable length, not fully extended, and for the most part keeps up with the linebacker coming off the edge there. This as a whole from our offensive line wasn't the best showing, but that's kind of the best example I can give right off rip here. But Julian Davenport, his arms are almost fully extended coming off right there when he tries to punch his side. And he just watches him go by. And Carson Wentz gets sacked right there. It's just stuff like this. He doesn't stay low. Doesn't get under. Doesn't stick and stay. Doesn't drive back. Doesn't have the speed. It's just the physicals, the mentals, the technique... It all needs work from Julian Davenport. I'm not saying he's incapable of putting in the work to become better, because he is definitely capable of doing that. But right now, he is just not very good. Here, I'll even play it at full speed for, for you guys to see and make your own analysis here. Comes off the edge, just way too fast. Just way too fast. Doesn't stick and stay. Uses his hands. He tries to hand fight with him. Just way too much. And try and slap at him. Way too much. This is what... Uh, th this was stuff that resulted in him getting benched later into the game. It's just atrocious. And Carson Wentz gets sacked. I'm sure I could go through other games... And find stuff like this. You know, like when Aaron Donald was coming off the edge, this happened probably multiple times. But it's just a terrible, terrible showing here. So I may have gotten some of the specifics of blocking wrong, may have not used the best examples, but you get the basic idea of what Julian Davenport does wrong. He doesn't stay low, he's slow off the ball, his, his he puts his hands in the wrong places he tries to use his hand too much doesn't use his body enough just doesn't have enough speed it's just overall everything he does worse and it sucks to watch it, it's atrocious to watch so yeah it's oh man oh man just hurts my brain it, it really just hurts my brain yeah
yeah, it's not it's not good. Julian Davenport blocking. <sighs> Man, it's not good. So yeah, that's teaching Julian Davenport how to block. Probably wrong on some things. I was I was probably wrong on some things. Um, if if somebody can correct me on them so that I can learn a bit more, I'm open to criticism because that means that I'll I'll learn more and I'll be better at judging a player. So I'm open to criticism on this because I probably got a few things wrong, but I definitely know for sure that I got a few things right. Um, it's it's just. People have been saying that Julian Davenport is bad, but they haven't really been answering the question of, well, what makes him so bad? So that's what I'm trying to answer here is, what makes him so bad? And I answered it, for the most part. If somebody else has another analysis, I'd like to hear it, because the search, I suppose, would still be ongoing as to why Julian Davenport is so bad at blocking. I, I can look at film, I, I can speculate all I want about him, but I'm not him, so I can't, I don't know what he's thinking when he does these things. I don't know what goes on in practices. Just his mental state, I don't know. So you have to take that into account. Maybe there's something that's just mentally messing with him. Because he, he has the size, he has the physical capabilities. It's just, maybe it, mentally it's just not all there. And his technique is just not there. So, you know, he, Staying low is is really that one big thing that most offensive linemen have as a problem, is staying low. And Julian Davenport just does it to an extent that it is severely, severely noticeable. So, yeah. See you guys next time. As always, I'm not funny. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, like it, I guess. If you didn't dislike it, cool, give me some criticism so that I actually know how to improve. Just like how I criticized Julian Davenport with telling him what he should do to improve. Um, don't just criticize without giving an actual suggestion on how to improve. Um, if you like this type of content, subscribe. Maybe I'll do some more film analysis on some, on some bad players. Maybe Malcolm Brogdon's um, playmaking. Film analysis on Malcolm Brogdon's playmaking. Or maybe Nico Goodrum's actually improved in batting so i can't really you know just players that are bad at certain things see the problem though is with malcolm brogdon it's just one piece of his game whereas with julian davenport it is everything just him being an offensive lineman everything about it is bad see you guys next time we'll never see it